my presentation today will be about uh, the triangle of CVC RM, Drupal views and Drupal web forms. And the web form bit wasn't really on the uh, agenda thing, but I thought I might as well do that as well. So that you have a bit of an idea of how you can integrate the whole thing and sort of walk yourself through a process of users visiting your website, uh, people in your organization using that information either in web forms through views or either in CVCRM through views as well. So you have a bit of an idea of what you can do with it. Um, that goes through this agenda. So I'll talk you a bit through what views and web forms are and uh, I'll show you the relationship with it. And then I'll demo it on the basis of a use case that we have and then I'll show you how to do that in uh, views and web forms and TV. Please feel free to stop me at any time you feel appropriate and ask any questions or make any comments that you like. Um, how many of you have already been using Drupal views and web forms? You presumably have. All of you have. Why are you here? Because <laughs> we feel like complete novices. <laughs> Sorry? Because we feel like complete novices when we look at it. Right. Because you feel it's really complicated to do it. We're, to, not, to, we're not sure why it works. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can you elaborate, elaborate a little on that? Yeah, I, I set up a, a web tool for signing into a, a night shelter event when it was every day. Uh -huh. And I couldn't figure out how to make sure that when it came up, that it was only for that day, that it was the event for that particular day. All right. So I put a question on Stack Exchange, and somebody came up with this brilliant recipe for doing it with Drupal views. Right. So I, you know, I clicked a few things. <laughs> <laughs> and it did. <laughs> um, and I always had to set web form so it, it, it used some URL, but I, I, I still can't quite understand how the two are talking to each other. Right, okay. Okay. It's really good. I'll, I'll <laughs> <laughs> and you hope to figure out now why it works that way. Well, I, I've tried to use views before, and it's, it's not very easy to get started. No, no, there's a rather steep learning curve there. Yeah, I, yeah. I would like to. Web forms is a lot easier, but oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and is, is your reason for being here similar to? Um, yeah, we've kind of used web forms a little bit, but never quite, they never seem to quite work how we want them to work. And I've spent a lot of time looking at the sort of pros and cons of web forms versus the profiles. Uh -huh. And so, so I've got a good, a relatively good grasp, but I've never used views. I've actually never used, never used views. All oh, right, okay. So then it's a bit like, okay, what next? Great, okay. I'm not entirely sure that I'll answer all your questions because I'm a functional guy. So um, I know how to click everywhere and put ticks on and off and stuff. And as soon as I get really uh, sort of close to technical, um, I'll look at you and ask you uh, to, <laughs> to, to help me answer the question. Because you've been working... No. Not no. at all? No. Oh, right. I thought you'd been using views already. Sure. Okay, okay. So that's why you're here. Okay. Um, well, let's go. Um, web forms. Um, is a Drupal module um, uh, which has a fair number of extensions in itself but it's it's used to have users of your system fill in data or uh, and it's used less for that but it works perfectly for that as well to show data to users either of their own or of other people having visited uh, stuff um, so it's not only a form that you can have people enter data into, you can also use it to show data to people, either read-only or uh, editable. Um, what it makes it really easy is that you, as an organization providing those things to your user, can decide what fields are on there, who can use them, uh, see them, uh, and conditionally, if they feel any yes, go to this uh, set of data that needs to be entered, and if there's a no, um, go to that set of data that needs to be entered. So th there's a whole uh, setup of things that makes it a lot easier for the, mostly for the inexperienced user to have a really s straightforward set of data to enter or for the experienced user to really rapidly uh, enter data uh, and only those fields that are needed for the process that they're in. Um, so you can use it for surveys. Um, there's relationships that you can set up. So you can say if they enter uh, these data in a web form, um, it needs Civi in the background needs to create a case or an activity and assign it to someone here or there 
so that your process is sort of started in CV as well on the basis of what an inexperienced visitor of your website enters into the web form. It starts something up in CV and your staff member or your volunteer will get to see an activity or a task in CV that he needs to carry out on the basis of what someone in CV's web form. I, I see you looking as in... <laughs> Are you saying that, that if someone says, uh, if I have some kind of form set up and I say, and, uh, say okay, how well do you know our organization or something, and they say, not well, then they'll go to a certain, they could, certain yeah. information could show up for them because they've entered that. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. That's one use yeah, case that you could have. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and of course, depending a bit on what your web form is supposed to do, if people submit the web form, such as registering for an event or something, you can have the web form send an email to confirm that these are the data that you've entered and this is the amount that you're supposed to pay into this bank account or whatever sort of information that you want to have there. And of course, all the results that you enter into a web form can be exported to Excel so that you can create your own little graphs um, to view what's been happening. And then, of course, there's web form CVCRM or CVCRM web form. I always keep forgetting what it's called. But that's the bit. There's the Drupal web form, and then there's the little extension called web forms underscore CVCRM, I think it is. Um, that makes sure that you can use all data from CVCRM into your web, fields, web forms, or the other way around, that they can enter data into the web form that goes straight into CVCRM. Underscore CV theorem. Yeah, <coughs> you need that to be able to use the data from CV. That's web form, Drupal web form. Then there's Drupal views, and Drupal views is basically a tool that enables you to rep to present data from, in our use case, CV theorem, to the user, and you as a the builder of that view can decide which fields or what sort of information people get shown. And apart from that, you can uh, have those fields have links to either a web form or the related contact in CVCRM to give extra information uh, to the user. Uh, and uh, you can make sure uh, that the user uh, looking at the view can only see those contacts or that information that he has the authorization to see. So that I get different contacts to see than you do um, because I'm a different user known in Drupal. Right. And then how does that look in a graph if you have CV, CRM, Drupal, and web forms? Is that of course CV is your database with all your client information in there, that your base system uh, that either provides data to the user or that data are being entered into. The web forms are used uh, to enter data into or to show data to the user about one contact or one activity, such as an event or such as my information because I'm the one logged in or so one event, one user. And the views present data about a number of contacts or about a number of events or about a number of whatever in a nice, um, spreadsheet list-like view. Okay, and that's what we're looking at. So let's see whether, yeah. So what I'll show, I'll show you first, show you the example of what that could look like as a result. And the use case is this, we have a coaching organization where people from outside can register or ask for coaching. Uh, and so their unidentified users that visit the website and decide, yes, I want to have a coaching session or I want to have a coach for something. So he registers through a web form to say, my name is Eric Brower and I have this coaching question and can I have coaching please? Then in Drupal, the uh, uh, staff member responsible for assigning requests for coaching to actual coaches looks at a view to see who's registered today, looks at a view looks at the question is asked and says, oh, right, that's really a question for coach so-and-so. So assigns that request to a coach. And then the coach every day looks at, okay, did I get any new requests? Which are my clients? Uh, and sees a list of you 
of those requests, clicks on them and goes into CVCRM to see uh, what requests or register when the next meeting will be with that client and stuff like that. That's the sort of use case we'll be looking at. I'm not entirely sure that, 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 did I sort of explain the process close enough? We'll have a look at it. Let's see. Sure. The, the uh, oh, sorry, this one? Yeah, just... That one, oh, sorry. So, in theory, just looking at this, nobody has actually logged into Signal yet. The, the coach in the end. The coach in the end, because he has a meeting with uh, with the uh, coach. He is that a word? No one ever gets to see City until the coach decides. I have a meeting with my client, and I'll record what we've been discussing or something. Yeah. Yeah. Those contacts we're using the webform would be in CCRM then normally. The, the assigned the, the person visiting the website. Yeah. He wouldn't. Well, they, they, yeah. they could, they, they could, could yeah. but they, uh, by the time they register, they're unknown to the organization, so yeah. they're a visitor, yeah. then they entered uh, their data. Yeah. And then you could make them a user yeah. of your system. Yeah. I've got one particular case where all of the users are in Civi, but the night shots are one, obviously they're not, because they're right. homeless, so yeah. they come in and you sign them in. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. You okay? Thank you, yeah, thanks. And so, uh, Oh, shit. I didn't check whether I had my Wi-Fi on here. Hold on. That's the one. Uh, ethical guest. guest. There we are. Let's assume this is our website. And this is your Drupal login, so we're not logged in. Um, our home page. And there's only one thing that we can do, and that's fill in an application form. And so when I go here, this is my application form. The web form Drupal module. And the fields that you see here are the fields that this organization requires someone who wants coaching to fill in. All of those fields are fields that I took from CVCRM. We'll see later on. But they go straight into CVCRM. So I'll use my uh, Dutch colleague in here. <laughs> Sorry, Glasgow. <laughs> You'll be the one asking for coaching today. Um, Uh, what's it in England? United is Kingdom. It, oh, is it United Kingdom? Oh, well. United. <laughs> there we are. I need to put my glasses as well if I'm looking at this one here. Then we have a birth date, this one here. Uh, project manager. Uh, I need to know how to become CEO. Whatever the question, <laughs> that's what you want, isn't it? <laughs> so there's your question question. And Klaska now submits this thing. And as soon as we do that, there's a web form um, in Drupal, but there's also all these data uh, in CVCRM straight away for anyone having access to the whole thing to see that in CV. The user, Classic in this case, gets this message or gets an email um, saying you've asked us for this request and we'll respond to you in five days or whatever. We're not logged in. So Classic now receives uh, the email and waits for the call uh, from someone else. And I'll go into a logged in user and I'll be logged in as an administrator, um, but we'll see the, the whole same thing. I'm now logged in as an administrator. And we see the same thing here. 
uh, but you also have views here. And one of those views is new applications. And I'll go in there, and if all went well, we'll see Klaska's application there in a view. We don't. <laughs> I did this whole thing this morning. Why not? Hold on. This is a view, too. It's not there. Sorry. What went wrong? Give me two minutes to find out what went wrong here. She's not there at all. That's the first row of demonstrations. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I did this this morning, worked perfectly. Did I change anything? No. Oh well. We'll have to do it with the data that are there. You'll have to believe me on my brown eyes that the fact that they're not there should normally work, and I probably don't know, like similar to you, why it works sometimes. But this is where Klaska should have appeared as well, as one of the new applica uh, applications coming in. This is a view, and um, you should have seen that here, a line saying, here's uh, Klaska, and she has this question, and she uh, entered that question on such and such a date. But since we don't, let me just try again, because it's too odd for words. It should have done that. Don't know why I didn't do that, but we'll just try again. Oh, sorry. Did I authorize that thing this morning and save that? Sorry, hold on. I have no idea why it doesn't do that. Never mind. That's how it is. First, as you said, first law of presentation. So we'll go to this one. So on that screen, it would show her and her question? Yeah. And then, that, okay. So similar to a list like this. Uh -huh. um, um, no, I, I, sorry, I won't try. Similar to one like this. This one, however, goes to in, straight into CVCRM. The previous one where you had the new applications, that would be a similar list, and then this one would actually go to her web form with her data in there um, and an extra field to say, I advise to, to provide that to coach so-and-so, and then that would be assigned to that coach, and then that's what he'd see. Do you do that on the new application screen? I'll, I'll show you where we need to do that, and I'll probably work out then as well why it doesn't work right now. Um, so. The workload page is the page for the coach. So this is the page the coach sees and says, okay, these are three new clients that I have, have been assigned to by our whoever does that. Um, and the coach will then click on the name here because that's linked to the CV field. And when he does that, he'll go to the client's uh, information We'll see here the data that were entered in there. He will see the coaching question there, such as here. And he will see under the relationship tab, this is not new information, is it? Because this is CV, but the relationship stuff, and that's clear that everyone knows now how that works. Right. So under the relationships, the coach has been assigned and a labor. Uh, so being the coach, being logged in, that's what you see. And so only the coach would go into CVCRM to record whatever else is there to be recorded about the coaching process. Um, 
whereas the secretariat picking up the application would only go into the web form to assign this to the coach. And then, of course, the coach can do whatever else he does here in CVCRM to record the coaching process. Right. That's what you can do with it. Authorized, and if you do it well and know what you're doing, um, then that works perfectly. And class kickers, I used her as an example, but you're using this similar to this, aren't you? Yeah. And how do you do it? Let's have a look at that, and then let's first create a web form, and then, hi, uh, create a web form, and then create a view that use the information that's entered in there. So what you do for a web form is you add content in Drupal, and there's a web form here, option. We'll give it a title. Mm. No, whatever, it doesn't matter. We'll provide a menu link so that we can see it in the main menu here. And we'll save it. Then you get to the web form module now. And these tabs here are always in the web forms module. And this one here is the CIVI, the web form underscore CIVI uh, part of the whole thing. And of course, if you enter fields here without doing switching on the CV connection, um, you can still create a web form, but the data won't go into CV. And if we go to this tab here, you can switch on, enable the CV CRM processing, and then the whole thing gets act activated. Now, we won't go through everything here, but entirely based on what your needs are, you'll most likely need some contact information. So you'll have some, uh, sorry, some uh, uh, fields here. You can decide on how many contacts you want. So if you want people to register the individual and the organization they work for, in CIVI, of course, uh, an organization contact card and an individual contact card, then uh, we'll switch on the number of contacts from one to two, or to three, or to four, and you define how they're related to each other in the web form here. Um, and of course, if you want them to register for an event, which is probably what you do, mm -hmm. uh, then you define here which events they are, or all events they can choose, which events they want to attend. Uh, you can have cases created uh, so that they uh, Civi creates a new case for you and uh, set up tasks in there, or the ordinary activities, or register memberships, or register donations. Those are all default categories? Civi? Yeah, these are all default available as soon as you switch on Civi, uh, Civi web form. What's quite good as well is you can, you can have an activity created for any one of those other things, yeah. just on its own. So, you know, if you... Um, you update something, then you can also create an activity, which is a nice audit trail. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, and that works really well, and it's easy for the user. Yeah. It takes some time to set it up, but it works really well, easy for the user. When you, when you, you might, I mean, one of my web forms updates information. It's very, yeah. very simple. But also, it actually creates an activity record in CVCR. That you've updated it, mm -hmm. That Yeah, exactly, yeah. So, so, so that provides an audit trail for, for knowing that that was how, you know, that, that, that happened and when it happened and, and who did it. So it's, it's, it's a very yeah, So if you have like a, a, a contact um, uh, information and you want to add a new field or yeah. something, then you've actually set up a, yeah. a trail yeah. to say that, oh, this has happened. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Right. Now let's have someone register his information to our organization. Now, the existing contact field is an important field. As soon as you want this uh, web form to be used by a user, of, a known user of your system, uh, as soon as it's an, uh, an unknown user, it's not so much relevant, uh, but I'll leave it on anyway. Um, but as soon as it's a known user and he logs in, the form will automatically bring up the information that we have of that person 
uh, in the in the form. Um, so let's switch these things on here, and let's say we want a phone field, and we can then of course say which phone type we want, and we want an email field, and that's it. And so now we'll have these data to be entered. So. Yeah, the, the checksum field is one that you would use in an e email that you send to the user uh, at any time afterwards to say, um, um, we, have th we, we know we have information of you, please take a look at what we have, click here. And then he goes to the web form and his data, without having to log in as a user, because if it's not that often they won't know their password and user information, and so the checksum thing is the link that makes sure that he gets to his information in the web form uh, and can change it or not change it or say, yes, this is correct and stuff. But you don't actually do that here. That's a token that you use in, uh, that you put in your email. Um, so, so we'll have basic information about name and gender, a phone number and an email address. And if I save the settings here, Then we go to the web form tab here. We're now back to uh, where we started just now with these fields that we can change the order of. Or uh, let me do that. Say that the first and middle and last name should all be um, horizontally next to each other rather than uh, vertically below each other. So I can influence what that looks like by saying, okay, I'll have a layout box, and first name, middle name, and last name should be horizontally next to each other rather than below each other. Now, the layout box thing is, again, a Drupal module that's related to Webform, so you need to download that, install that, and stuff, and then you can use that to lay out your Webform a bit nicer than the ordinary everything below each other Sorry, thing. It's a Drupal um, a module. Right. Uh, Drupal calls a module, so yeah. Um, and so once that's done, uh, and I save it, and I then go to the View uh, tab here, I get to see the web form that I created. And this, of course, is the effect of the layout uh, box thing. And these here are the other fields. And because I had the existing contact tick ticked, um, it takes my data that are in here, whereas an anonymous user would obviously have an empty. And the existing contact thing tick is an important thing to think about because if you haven't done your web form very well, and I'm not aware of what I'm doing, I'll change these data, and then I'll change my record, whereas I'm trying to influence someone else's information. And Klaska knows very well that they've been doing that a lot of times, and that they lost contacts and weren't aware how that was happening and stuff. And that's because users didn't realize that they were changing their own data rather than entering new contacts data. So that's something to, to consider, but let me, there we are. And if I now say, oh, they don't know that I'm male, and that this is my phone number, and I can add that and submit it. And now these data are all in city. Because so let me, have I got it here open? Yeah. With the web form, do you aim to save um, a template for one and reuse it instead of keep using the same template? Um, not, not a template, you can, I think you can copy them. You can clone them. Clone, clone them, yeah. that's it, so that's the word, yeah. Clone, yeah. Can, yeah. 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 So if you have one of you might, you can just clone them. Yeah. Um, and so of course, if, now, if I now go into CV, you'll see that my phone number has changed, and then I've become mail, which information wasn't there yet. And if I go back uh, to the form here, 
of course, the web form will pick up that information each time I go there now um, to see. Right, that's really basic. I'll show you one more thing. I don't how long we have till 10.30, right? Or even longer, 10.30? Yeah. Can, can you get back to the web form for a second? To the? To the web form. Yeah, I am. Yeah, if you go to the, to the city CRM web. Oh, sorry, yeah. And then go to additional options at the bottom. Mm -hmm. This is an important thing. The, at the top there, it shows you the, the link that you can put in the email. Yeah. yeah. And it took me a while to find that. Yeah, so you paste that in an email, yeah. and then Siri will substitute the, um, the actual checksum. And so we'll substitute uh, this here, what is necessary for to click on so that Siri knows what user, what person is, log is looking at his data. Um, I'll go into the web form here. Oh, come on. There's, there's, no, <coughs> there's no text for me to fill up this. Ah, there we are. Yes. Um, I'll show a few, a few little things about what you can do with the web form. Let's assume that we don't want people to change their last name uh, so that they can see their last name such as we have it, but not change it. This is in what you were talking about, not making mistakes. Is this related to not? Th that could be one of the measures that you take or not switch on the existing contact tick so that you get an empty web form all the time. Okay. If you go into the edit um, section here of the field of the last name, then somewhere at the bottom here, there's the private tick, uh, sorry, the disabled uh, tick. And if you tick that, the field becomes read only so that the user can't actually change it when he looks at it. And on the web form, uh, do I have it open somewhere now? On the web form, you can see now that I can do and click in it, but I can't actually change anything of it. Whereas I can still change the first name field. There's a lot of those little configurational things that you can play around with, uh, but this is one of them. Then you ask for the conditionals. Uh, what you do here, and in the example I won't be able to do very much, but in the, uh, what you do here is say, okay, when someone has entered his first name, then, he should, uh, then the field last name should appear. You won't normally do that, but you could uh, uh, do that. And what you would then say is here, add a conditional. If first name is... Uh, and this has to become not empty, then last name is shown. And I don't know why it does it this way, but there we are. So that goes, how do you make it so it goes to a different page? Because you mentioned that before. Um, if you have a different page. So you have to create the other page. Yeah. yeah. So you have to create all the pages. Yeah, it has to know all the fields of the pages and stuff. And so when you then say, so as soon as you get to this field or whatever part of the web form you want it to go to that next yeah. page, as soon as it gets in, that data is entered, go to page so and so. So the workflow in that case would be doing all the web form first yeah. and then going back to the first one yeah. in the order that you yeah. want yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And then here on the emails tab here, you can define um, on the basis of the component value email, that's the field from your web form, what should happen. So if the uh, web form is submitted and the email field is entered, then what sort of information should we send to the user that has entered those data? 
I won't fill in the whole thing here, but then you get the, the default template is this one where they, uh, uh, where you get to see what values you've entered into the web form and that's sent to me as the one person filling in, uh, or, or, uh, the owner of the web, uh, the email address, sorry. What was that under? What's that? It's under the web form main tab and then here on the ah, emails. Okay, and that's what goes back to the people yeah. who just filled in the form. Yeah. There's also a validation module, isn't there? Which yeah. Is a Drupal module which you can add, you can download and add to it, and then you can do all sorts of clever validation. Yeah. What's Such as on phone number, does it have ten numbers or whatever, however many numbers it should have? Or, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now there's plenty about web forms and all the modules, the sub models of web forms that you can add to this to develop the whole thing and. But this is a basic uh, uh, thing. Uh, another thing that's relevant to know is that you can say any user can only enter this web form once uh, and not twice, or switch that off. And any user can add as many of those web forms as you like, depending on the purpose of the whole thing. And so in a situation where you only want someone to say become a member of an organization once, yeah. if you see that same name or an email, yeah. you say no. Yeah. But if it's something like I want lots of different coaching, then I can fill in. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Now let's go to the same thing when not logged in, and then of course now the web form appears here. And if I go there, I get an empty web form, and I can submit data into there for whatever purpose we have it here. That's the web, creating the web form. Now let's also create a view that uses data from that web form. So that we can show a list of data entered. And that you normally find under this structure menu in CV. So let me go there. And then you go to views, which is at the bottom here, but for any other language, it can be anywhere uh, in this list here. And of course, the web form thing was relatively simple to develop and do. You need to play around with that a bit, but the views user interface looks a bit more complicated and techy, and I suppose it is as well. And first of all, you get an overview of the views that are already there. But let's create a new one, add new view. And then we'll give it a name, Civic on Contacts. You can add a description to it. And what do you want to look at in this view? And what we want to look at, and as you can see, you can basically create views of any uh, entity in uh, Civic. But what we now, for this purpose, want to look at the city CRM contacts. The page title is going to be this. The path is going to be this. And we want it to be a table. And in the table, we can only add fields so that we can decide on what we want to see. Let's continue and edit. Now I'll have you look at this thing for a, a little while so that you can get some idea of what you're looking at. But this is basically the configuration page of, of the uh, of view with the title of it, what we said that it has to be a table and the settings of that table, but you can change those things once you've created this. This is the, these three are relevant for now. Uh, we'll look at those a bit closer. You can add the fields that you want in your view. You can say, which filter criteria that you want in your view, and you can sort them alphabetically or on date or on whatever uh, here. So let's add some fields first. And here again, what you see is a filter here to say which fields am I looking for and all the fields that you can possibly select. But if we say the display uh, name, Eric Blauer is the field that we want to see. Then I search for display, and then it shows me all the fields that sort of 
And the top one here is the one that we'd want to use. I'm sorry, I'm walking in all the time, aren't I? Sorry. <laughs> um, apply this to all displays. The title of the column that it's in, I'll leave everything as it is for now, apply to all displays. And at the bottom here, I can immediately see what I got. For now, I get to see all the contacts that are in CVCRM with their display name and their contact ID because that was the first field that was already shown there. Display name was the name of the field you gave, one of the fields with the name in it? It actually refers to the, the top field in CVCRM on the top of the card. Okay, that's cool. And it's like the, the combined, what's it, um, prefix, first name, middle name, and surname. And that's called the display name. Yeah. But you can, of course, also have the separate first name, middle name, and last name fields separately if you want. But then I'd have to do three fields, and, <laughs> and now I'd only have to do this one here. With the header and the printer, can you use um, templates that you've got in the CV already, or do you need to put them in each time? I think you have to put them. I never use them, but I think you have to put them in here. Yeah, separately. Yeah. Um, so here we are, but I don't, of course, want the contact ID to appear because that's not relevant information for a view most of the time. So I go back to my fields, select that contact ID field, and say, I don't want that in my display, exclude it from there. And once I do that, my preview will only show the names. Let me add one more thing and let that be uh, the mail address. And then here again, you choose a CVCRM email address, apply it to all displays. Okay, I was getting mixed up. The display is talking about the view. Yeah. You see on the view. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I'll say apply again, and then here we are. This is the view for now. And again, for now, it shows all the contacts that are there and all the email addresses that we have. There's one other thing that I want to do right now, and that is I want to be able to click on the name and go to the CVCRM record so that I can use the information there. So I'll go back to the display name, because that's the field I want to click on. But you can use a lot of those fields and here it says, link this field to its CVCRM contact. So I say, tick that, apply again to all displays. And here now, there's, they're linked. And if I click on my name here, I now go to my contact record in CV, which makes it really simple to create a list like this. What you get to see now is everything. So let's see if we can add a filter uh, so that we don't get to see everything, but only a number, uh, some of those contacts. So we go to the filter criteria here. And let's say I only want to see organizations. Uh, And I'll type in type here and say I want to see only the contact type organization. So I select that here, apply to all displays. Is one of organization. Contact type is one of organization. Apply to all displays. And now I have only one page with two, four, five organizations and all the others are gone. And basically on any filtering option that's available, you can say, um, this is the information that I want to see. Of course, I don't want it to be filtered on organization, but I want it to be filtered on individuals. Hi. Uh, I want it to be filtered on individuals. So I'll 
I go for contact type again. Contact type here. And here we are with our two pages of individuals shown. Now, one important thing to remember is whatever you do on the views thing, it doesn't do anything until you save it and the save button is at the top. Um, so the, the first few views that you create are probably completely in vain because you forget to save it. <laughs> but then it's a nice exercise to not forget it. <laughs> no. Sophie, now save it. I forgot to say that it had to go into the menu, so I'll do that uh, now. So now we have the page, it's saved, but it doesn't appear anything anywhere yet. So let's put it in the menu somewhere. Um. In the main menu. Apply. Now we have two, I think. I, I think I call the web form Civic CRM contact, Civic on contacts as well, but never mind. Save it again. ages but it's and there we are civic on contact and now we have a view that we created with all the contacts that I defined all the individuals in there and the user can click on be the franchise and get his data in there now this is a rather basic setup um, but the, the workflow would be a contact can enter his data with his email address and they'll appear here and depending on the filter that you have here, so because now we haven't filtered apart from saying it's an individual, we haven't filtered anything. But as soon as you have a flow similar to the one we had with the coaching, you say the coach, uh, sorry, there's a coaching request. Uh, as soon as the status of that coaching request hasn't changed, it will appear in this view. Uh, and if it has changed, it will disappear from this view. And that would then be a filter that you set up. Uh, just to check, so you're logged in here. Yeah. Is it public or is it just for you? Are this you view? Uh, let's check. This is the logged out uh, yeah. version. So for now, it's public. But as you can see, the links have gone. So that would be useful if you would want a list of people taking part in an event to be publicly uh, available. But let's assume that you don't. Uh, once you've created a view, that's interesting, relevant to know, if you go have your mouse over the view, you get this little, I don't know what that's called, but thing here. Cog. Cog? Okay. <laughs> okay. And if you, if you go there, you can edit the view. And there's the access uh, option here. And if you base it on roll, you can say which users are allowed to see this view. Oh, sorry, so not that one. Let's say, sorry, the authenticated user can see it. Apply it. Save it. And now, of course, the, um, the anonymous user won't see it. Was it done? No. Now it is. Uh, So now you get your access denied uh, option or page. Okay, 
Do you get the basic setup of the whole thing? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Can you add a filter on the view itself once, the, once it's displayed on the page, you can put a filter at the top? Yeah, you can. So you mean um, you want the user to be able yeah. to decide how many of those am I going to get to see on the basis of what filter? Yes. Yeah, okay. So if you go here, again, to the cog, A gear. Mechanical. All right, that makes more. Yeah. <laughs> a gear. A gear. A gear. Gear. Um, oh, sorry. So let's say you want the user to be able to decide: Do I want to see organizations, households, or uh, individuals? Yeah. That's only because I already have the field of uh, the filter here. Uh, expose this filter to visitors to allow them to change it. Sorry. There's this tick here. And then you can provide them with which ones they can choose from, or allow them to say, I want to see individuals and households, but not organizations or whatever. Let's keep it like that. Oh, sorry, no, never mind. We'll see what we have first. And so this is now the interface, and the user can say, give me only the individuals. Oh, sorry, the organization was easier, because that's a, a bigger difference. And so the user can now say that. Go on. Let's save that and look at the actual view. And there you are. This is, there's different options, but this is one of the options to have them filter themselves. Can I perhaps just give you a practical example? Um, we use very heavily on our website. We right. Um, we're a music service, so we produce registers for all the groups, so you can have 350 children divided between 25 groups. And what we've done is to use the, exactly what you're doing, mm -hmm. use the individual, we've then got groups, so you can select, right, I want a big band, for instance. Um, you select that, and then that actually gives you a complete register list with all the contact details and emergency numbers of the kids. Yeah. And then on top of that, I'm using um, PDF views, I think it is, okay. where I can actually create a PDF version and then I can change the layout because this is a bit limited in terms of what yeah. you can print out. Yeah. And yeah. So that's another module that if we did Drupal, yeah. which sits on top of this. Yeah. So you can then add logos, you can move text around. Yeah. That's a really nice example, yeah. 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 Um, it's called PDF views. Um, you have to be a bit careful with the actual um, uh, the, the view. It's the actual PDF drive the engine underneath it. You've got to be a bit careful which one you use. You know, I, I think you can remember that there are some buggy issues with, with some of the options with Drupal, mm. certainly. But, but it works very effectively. Um, it takes a little bit of setting up. But um, once it's running, I mean, we've had no problems with it at all. It's, uh, it's a good job. I'm running, I think it's currently about 30 register options using views. With PDF module on top of it. It's this one, isn't it? Views PDF? That's it. Yeah. That's the one. yeah. So, class, if you go to this URL here, drupal.org slash project slash views underscore PDF. It's the status on it. I, it's been under quite a bit of heavy development recently. All right. It's still good. And but there's a particular PDF driver that you recommend using? Uh, basically, using? there are various PDF drivers some you can use actually with Drupal, and some are better than others, so you need to do a research on that. I can't, on, on top of it, I can't remember exactly what I'm using and get underneath it. So. But it does tell you within that and where it's about. Oh, it tells you? Yeah. Okay. So just follow that instruction. Mm. Could, you, could you just show us where you act, activated that user can define the thing that you just. Oh, right, the filter thing? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we'll go back to the gear. Um, and on the filter criteria, you click on the Filter, the field that you've used in this case. You can have several filters, but and all of those can be used to say the user can actually say which he wants to use. And I tick this thing here to expose that to the, to the, uh, uh, to the user. And there's a lot of options, but I, what I said was is one of those three. You, you could have um, you could have several filters. Several yeah, you can have several filters for several, like, like date filters and. Yes. 
Yes. In our situation, we're using individual and we're using subgroups. Yeah. So I've got students and you know, different things. So you've got a, basically a whole hierarchy underneath that that you can choose from. So it's incredibly flexible. Yeah, it is. But it and depends what you do in civic as to what you then see. Yeah. yeah. And the other the catch you've got to be very careful is that you update the, um, uh, the shared data underneath it. Um, because if you make changes in the city and then you don't update the group you won't see anything. You must always update the next. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and important to be aware of is to set up city properly first, to have your data oh, in there and know, you know, fairly reasonably well that that is okay as it is, before you start creating views or web and stuff that you actually publish. Um, because I think if this is the arty side, then I think it's city is the mechanics. Yeah. Right. So if you, if you right. have that approach, you yeah. can't go yeah. wrong. Yeah. But don't dabble with both ends simultaneously. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But any number, and it takes a bit of playing around with it to, you know, to get to know what exactly happens and what it does and why it does it that way. Um, but if, as soon as you do and have it, flexible. it's amazingly flexible. That's why I, I think at every CiviCon that's uh, uh, on, it should have a session on web forms, Drupal views, and CVC so around in, in that triangle that I showed you. I mean, with, with, um, certainly with Civi, I mean, the reporting is pretty limited. I mean, I use extended reports as well, which, you know, Lobo is designed. That works well, but this is so much more flexible. Yeah. Yeah. There, are, there are reports I can pull off this that I couldn't possibly do within Civi. Yeah. So it's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I would agree. I just ask one quick question. Sure. Back to the checksum, really. So it's a bit of a tangent. Um, the we talked about sending the checks and token via email. Yeah. Is there a way for an anonymous user, like a known user, but not somebody who's got a Drupal login? Mm -hmm. um, so we've got some information stored in our database about a particular organisation. Can they access, you know, like, like they do using the checksum URL, can they access their information without me prompting it from, through an email? Is there a way of them being able to get just to see their contact information without logging in well maybe they would have to log in but how they, like <laughs> I think just, just to drink i mean just to sort of the idea of just, them just basically going into a, a web form or something uh -huh. like pre-populated where they don't have to go to civic but this, these are external people not staff or volunteers connected to us but organizations we have contact with yeah because we actually have another website that we do publish information about their organizations yeah and so up till now, we've sent emails out saying, please check your information. Yeah. But we were saying, is it possible, you know, if they know that their information has changed, can, do they have to wait for me to send an email out every six months? Or is there a way that they can come and say, right, I need to change my information? Yeah. Uh, apart from all the procedural stuff and how, what your contacts are like with those organizations, you know. Uh, but technically, uh, there's a number of things that you can do. But the views thing would be a perfect thing to, to enable that, uh, to have that done. Uh, and what you need is a relation between the different sets of data that that particular user can have access to and that particular user in CV to begin with. So your relationship type in CV of that organization or person could be is, I don't know, primary contact for okay. and then one, two, three or any number of organizations uh, that is primary contact for. And then in the Drupal view, um, that you would create, such as that, the one that we did here. Uh, he'd see either the contacts or the organization that he's primary contact for. Uh, and in your filter, uh, in views, and th that's not a, a, an easy one to set up, but once you've sussed it out, um, it's perfectly clear. But in your filter, you would have to say the current user, your contact, uh, will only see the organization that he is the primary contact for in CVCRM. And then you'll get a list of two or 20 uh, organizations or people that he can access. And then you can either, uh, you're very likely to choose to say that once he clicks uh, on this thing, on any link, you don't want him to go to CVCRM, you want him to go to uh, a web form with the data that he has to have access to to either edit those or just check those. And that we haven't done yet. I'm not sure that I know them by heart, but I'll try anyway. So just so I can make sure I understand. So 
do it in Sydney instead of the primary contact. So, so whatever you'd call it, but something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, they would have to have a Drupal login because otherwise you... Yeah, so that, that's their way of accessing their yeah. login. Yeah. But you then set up... At, where, at what point, sorry, just remind me, where, where, do they, where do you click to say that primary contacts can only see their information? So that's not a role, is it? That's something you've just set up. That's a filter. That's something you've set up in Civi. Here's a primary contact for. Yeah. And then in the view, yeah. this one here. And let's go back to the setting that up. Yeah. Is it just the CV ID number that's generated by sending it to the CV? No, it's, it's a much yeah. more complicated than that. Yeah. It's not just that number, it's a check. It's a check. It's, 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 a check so it's, it's, hash, it's hashed, hashed up. up. So it's an unidentifiable it, set. It's the same for each contact. It's unique to that. Number. It's unique, it's yeah, because otherwise. It's straight to their record. Yeah, yeah, but that's what I'm thinking. So if you, could have, if you knew what that was and they had that and you could have updated. For the last seven days. Yeah. Oh, is that okay? Yeah, you can extend that, but that would only be for one contact. And in your use case, you want them to be able to edit data from different contacts. Yeah. yeah. If I understood you well, yeah. for different contacts, right? Yeah. Um, so, uh, l l two things. So, if you want them to go from the name field to a web form rather than to CV CRM. Yeah. That's the only bit of coding that you need when you want to set that up. It's, it's a standard code, and I don't think I know it by heart, but I'll show you where it needs to go. Okay. It needs to go into, sorry, did I, I'll go back to where I started. Um, so you have the field that they need to click on to go to the web form. You click on that. Then you say rewrite the results. Rewrite the output? No. All oh, right. Output this field is a link. And this is where the code needs to go. And let me check for you what exactly it has to be. Mm, this one, I think. And I think that's why it's not working. OK. Uh, I think it was on this field here. There we are. This code here, and what it does is that's to identify the Drupal node. Five is the number, is the ID of the web form that it needs to refer to. So that's our uh, Civicon contact web form. I don't know what question mark means. CID stands for contact ID. One, I don't know what that refers to, and then it's the idea. So this is a bit of code that says, go to web form so and so of contact, and then the ID is taken from City. Yeah, it goes to the web form that you want them to go to with the fields and the authorization that they have for that. And this, the, the, the line, as soon, if you forget it over there, it seems to be an error or whatever. Uh, it's, it's in the manual, you know, the, the book thing on the cvcrm.org. Um, and this CID goes to a contact, but you can also have them go to cases or, or, contrib or what, stuff like that. But then it's not CID, but something like K -A -I -C -A -I -D or something. But look in the book and you'll find it there. And if you have that there, these links will go to the web form you've defined. 
and they can enter the data or edit the data that you want them to be edited. That's the thing that wasn't working when I started off. Sorry. Oh, it's time. I'm sorry, because there's people at the window looking annoyed at why we're still, I was wondering what was going on. Sorry. Um, just, just um, so that you set that up, you just tick the, you know, generate a link, and yeah. then it's there, and then you have to put that into, right. where is it just? So in the name field, yeah. enter the, this line, yeah. where this depends on the idea of the web form, yeah. and this is fine as it is. And then the link doesn't go to see if it goes to the web form with the data field and uh, ed, uh, set up. Thanks very much.